We turn to important health news now about shopaholics. People scoff, but one in 20 Americans have a problem controlling their shopping, and it can cause bankruptcy, destroy marriages, and even trigger panic attacks and depression. But it's not just the buying that's a problem. Chronic returning is becoming more and more common and damaging. ABC's Andrea Canning has more. Returning items to the store isn't just a post-holidays ritual for many Americans. Serial shoppers return items they buy on a regular basis throughout the year. They return. I buy something, now I have it at home. And return. I feel bad that I paid so much for it. And return some more. And when I get home, I'm like, oh, I really don't like it. Most consider it a harmless habit. But for this woman who asked to remain anonymous, her behavior ventures into dangerous territory, returning thousands and thousands of dollars of merchandise a year. It's the binging, the purging, the binging, the purging. She has an obsession some psychologists call bulimic spending, the retail version of the eating disorder. I probably spend up to 20 hours a month returning items. Shopping once cost the big city professional her home and her 401k. Now as she makes the long road to recovery and still craves the emotional need of spending, her new addiction is returning. 100% of the time I have regret, remorse, guilt. Um, I mean, it, it can make me physically ill. Dr. April Lane Benson, author of I Shop, Therefore I Am, says serial returning is a well-kept secret because it carries so much embarrassment and shame. The person who's the compulsive returner is often very perfectionistic and feels that they should be more in control than they are. Benson says dopamine levels in the brain rise during the anticipation of the buy and then crash later, creating buyer's remorse. That remorse can contribute to big losses for store owners. Retailers say they're fed up with serial returners, losing up to $15 billion a year on bad returns. The shopping and the returning kind of go hand in hand. It's really trying to fill a need, and it's not necessarily a material need. It's just trying to fill up an emotional need. This bulimic spender says she's still learning the hard way that a 15-minute walk around the block before buying that new pair of shoes can help curb her emotional cravings and save hours of returning in the long run. For Good Morning America, Andrea Canning, ABC News, Arlington, Virginia. And we're joined now by Dr. April Lane Benson, a psychologist and expert in shopping disorders who we just saw in that piece. Good morning to you. Good morning. Why? Why are people doing this? Well, as you heard in the piece, there's a rush of the brain chemical dopamine when we anticipate pleasure. And for many people, shopping is one of the places where they anticipate pleasure. They get home, sometimes come to their senses, realize they bought something they don't need, they can't afford, and they realize that the next thing they need to do is return. A lot of us return things, and I return things all the time. So how do you sort of know, are there signs that, you, that it's beyond just the normal? Sure. If you have shopping bags lining your closet, lining your hallway, and your car trunk is like a revolving door, some people call it their halfway house, then you have to think about you may have a problem. If you send other people to return for you because you feel so embarrassed that you, you know, you're there constantly, mm -hmm. that's a sign. And you're preoccupied with shopping, you say. Yes. And people who are just obsessed with thinking about it all the sure. time. Sure. And the, the time and energy you spend in the behavior is time you could be doing something else much more satisfying. And, and how do these folks feel about, I mean, is there also a sign in terms of the way you feel? We mentioned in the piece of feeling shame, feeling embarrassed mm -hmm. about having to go back to the store. Sure. And feeling guilty. There are lots of feelings like that, feeling sad, defeated, despairing. Some people do it because they're angry. The shopping is mm -hmm. motivated by anger. What do, you t what do you tell people to do then? What's the sort of first step? Well, in the first step is to really think about your buying before you do it. And I have people ask themselves six questions. Why am I here? What do I feel? Do I need this? What if I wait? How will I pay? And where will I put it? Pausing before you buy can really make a difference. Mm. Take that walk around the block, as mm -hmm. we said. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time.